There are many risks associated with storing gold within the banking system, namely the risk of bankruptcy or government confiscation. But there is also a more complex risk related to the price manipulation. Investing in gold is generally done as a security measure to protect oneself against the risks associated with the fragility of the financial system and to have access to a universally accepted means of payment in case of bank failure or temporary closing. If you have some gold in a bank's vault and the bank closes temporarily or worse goes bankrupt, you lose the advantage of having close at hand a means of payment for your basic needs in times of trouble when access to traditional means of payment like cash or bank cards is hampered. The risk of bank failure is a very serious one with the banking system being entirely interconnected. Even though the risk is small, confiscation has happened in the past. Confiscation could happen following a panic movement in the banking system or just before announcing a new monetary system. In that case, Owning gold in one's country of residence is risky because it can be seized legally. Whether one's gold is allocated or not, in order to understand the amount of risk associated with storing gold within the banking system, one has to grasp the mechanism of price manipulation occurring through the sale of previously leased physical gold. Traditionally, the central banks have leased this physical gold to the bullion banks that specialize in gold trading, which helps make them a profit on their idle gold stock, while maintaining the price low. Price manipulation can only happen in these two ways, either with the sale of previously leased physical gold on the market or with a massive sale of virtual paper gold. In both cases, the sheer mass of supply helps keeping the price low. Let's start with the physical part. These last few years, central banks have stopped leasing their gold. After having leased quite a bit in the past, they are holding on to their reserves now. When leasing gold, the rate is determined by the gold lease rate. And this rate is extremely low, being based on LIBOR. And we now know with the LIBOR scandal, that it has been manipulated to the downside. And we now see the scope of that scandal when we relate it to the gold price manipulation. Who is left to lease physical gold to a bank for such a ridiculously low rate? No one. Central banks have done it for years, but that trend is over due to their low reserves. Central banks own 10% of existing gold, and the rest is in private hands. Which begs the question, since physical gold leasing hasn't stopped, where does that physical gold come from, knowing that the central banks have stopped leasing any gold? One is left to wonder if that gold might not come from some private accounts of allocated gold, ETFs, or futures contracts gold stocks. The physical gold would be recuperated by certain banks without the consent of its clients via rehypothecation, and then leased to the commercial banks who then turn around and sell it on the market. What this accomplishes is that by keeping the price of gold low, trust is being maintained in the actual fiduciary system. Risk of bankruptcy, risk of confiscation, interconnectedness of the banking system, rehypothecation, price manipulation. Those are real risks that one has to take into consideration before deciding where to store one's physical gold. <laughs>